Good morning. So this is the beginning of week three. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. What's the clinched? The Leafs clinched their playoff spot last night by beating the Montreal Canadiens. Which, uh, which is expected or unexpected because there's, there was nobody else to play except Canadian teams? Well, expected this year because they're doing so well. But Are they doing well? They're in first place in their division. Wow. A lot of, a lot of people are predicting they're going to do very well. I'm trying not to get too ahead of myself. Yeah, you shouldn't. <laughs> Jud judging by pre previous results. Exactly. Right, right. So this is the morning after. And uh, unfortunately, I was going to say I'm happy to say, I'm not happy to say, but um, the results came in with no sales. No. So that's, um, that, that beta ran its course. And um, today I'm going to send out an email asking people whether... Um, like what was the uh, challenge for them? Like yeah. what was was it the price? Was it the offer? Was it some? Oh, God damn it! Keeps playing. Was it the challenge? And uh, so basically, try to find what is going on with my camera. What is it so hard to focus? There you go. <laughs> it, it now gets the white balance okay. I mean, most of the time when I go on Zoom, I'm, I'm fine. But, yeah. But, oh, boy. So, yeah, so now it's unpacking the launch. I'm going to get all of the numbers. Uh, I, I'll, I'll try to get all of the numbers aligned just to see how much was spent, how much was um, uh, all of the stats basically yeah. and just just to see what it looks like and now uh, i think no i'm not thinking I, I know for sure that the next one i'm going to do is uh going to look at analysts and one of the things is i I, I like what you said yesterday about talking to them because i don't know if people are going to be inclined to pay for the bigger program yeah. and then i'll have to be smart about uh pricing it. because it might very well be that this time I did not get signups because of the price, but I was also going by the fact that what you said, like you need to charge the amount that you would be happy to get to yeah. do this. Yeah. So yeah, so that is uh, that is the unfortunate result of the first about what sixty days uh, yeah. since since this went live. Any, um, well, I guess you'll you'll find out. I'm just one thing that popped in my head was was there too much value already in the beta program for these folks to then you know what I mean like if they came to learn about their niche they already got what they came for do they need uh oh I see so you're you're, you're implying if I understand you correctly that when you call the prog uh, when you call something, find out about your niche, and then yeah. you deliver on that, you, it's kind of like check mark. Yeah, it doesn't necessarily lead into anything else. Yeah, I'm just what instead of giving them a nibble of the cheese, did you give them the whole chunk? Yeah, I actually like the cheese thing. One, yeah. one he talks so very well. Yeah, I know he's, he's great. Really well. Um, it might be, but then and then there's uh, it's it's also an interesting uh, dilemma because. On the one hand side, if you propose something bigger and you don't deliver on it, people may yeah. be upset saying like, look, this is this feels like a bait and switch. Yeah. You're right. If you say something and you deliver on it, that might be Billy. Promise complete. Thank you very much. Yeah. I do believe that I had a very strong arc in the sense that, look, you have your niche, which is great. Now do something with this. And this is what this program is supposed to give you. Yeah. Why well, just don't like to me? I guess what I'm getting at a little bit is your beta test felt more like a, a true test of the actual course mm -hmm. versus a lead magnet webinar kind of thing that would lead people into buying the course. It uh, no, that's a, that's an interesting point. 
in which case trimming down the number of lessons really should help because then it get, kind of gets you uh, gets, gets you going and then you want to do more yeah like I, I don't know i don't know what the what your program is how they position the whole thing i just think of like what i went through with amy porterfield and with talia recently i mean it's only a, a one hour two hour webinar experience mm -hmm. that feeds you into into wanting to buy their course but like these people had like two full weeks of like access to all kinds of content plus office hours plus plus like they, they basically got the experience of being in a full course so which is fine because I, like to i when you when it's called a beta test and position that way that's what it feels like to me it's like you're te you're testing the waters with the actual like course like and i don't know like how much like what what did what haven't they seen that's in the signature program that they were going to be buying nothing they haven't seen anything in the signature program because the signature program is supposed to be the uh, operation like you 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 the niche yeah. is um you're essentially deciding what you want to focus on yeah okay yeah. so you've decided now what and now what is the signature program yeah. Yeah. But yeah. I, 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 your point's well taken. Um, there is a part of me that wants to try to sell the nail a niche, nail a niche course into uh, as, as a short program uh, on Facebook like for yeah. seventeen dollars, for example. Yeah. And see if that gets uh, people in, because at least if if that if those conversions do occur, then you have. Uh, the ability to recoup any spend on the ads. Yeah. Is that like, that sounds really cheap to me. To, to who? Maybe, well, maybe just 27. A, like, I, I'm seeing, I'm seeing, I'm seeing. So the golden, the gold price is $27. Yeah. 27.34 is everything. I'm, I'm seeing a lot of ads now in my feed. Yeah. So more than that more than I care to admit, but I'm now interested in them just because yeah. I'm interested in how they work. Yeah. So from a professional standpoint, and I'm seeing the $27 to $34 is kind of the golden spot. Yeah. All have well-developed sales pages, all long form sales pages on them. I'm, I, yeah, I'm just gonna do that. You know, I'm just having a hard time wrapping my head around on this end of the spectrum, seventeen dollars, and on this end, twenty five hundred dollars. Yes. Right. Yeah. Like I, I know uh, that 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 might be the case. In this particular case, it was free twenty five hundred dollars. Yeah. Yeah. I, I I mean, we're only just guessing what people are thinking or saying, but. What, I just wonder. You know what? To, to your point, if I if I kind of if I kind of play out uh, the thinking and what 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 your words are triggering in my head, yeah. You don't necessarily have to go all the way to the highest price point. Yeah. What if you do start at a lower price point? What if this was a four hundred ninety nine dollar course? Yeah. Probably would be an easier conversion. And then you get more testimonials and then you get a good run through the course and you uh, optimize your material and then you can up the price. Yeah. Technically that's good price. But my biggest challenge with this beta, although price might be, and I, and I may find out that price was the sticking factor. Yeah. But my problem was not that. My problem quite obviously was the fact that I did not get enough beta testers. Right. My numbers just could not work out. I mean, that's that's the truth. A hundred people in a beta test is the bare minimum, and ideally, like uh, in Jenna's uh, in, from Jenna's perspective, ideally yeah. you're looking at five hundred to eight hundred people. Yeah, and that's not impossible. I'm, I mean, I'm seeing people who are reaching like three hundred, five hundred. Hold on, I'm just going to close the door. Sure. We have this conversation every morning. Every morning, I forget to close the door. <laughs> I should have learned by now, right? Yeah. But, uh, so, but that's that's that is the one thing 
I did not achieve in this particular one is yeah. not being able to generate enough interest. And even the interest that I did generate, like the one that, that was ad driven was not quality interest. In other words, they were not engaged. Yeah. So for me, for me, I need affiliates. So I need your, affiliates who would be driving people to this course. Is your sense that the market just isn't big enough or you just didn't tap into the market? That is a very good question. And I'll be honest, I do not have an answer to it because um, for each point that you mentioned, I have an opinion. I don't know if that's opinion. Is it right or not? Yeah. There's, there's one thing that I do know for certain, and this is kind of reinforced by my conversation with that lady and um, who's doing this in Europe, is um, there are few people who are like you, for example. I, 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 it, rings, it still rings in my head what you said about the fact that your coaching business, what you're doing right now is what you will be doing as your job for the rest of your working career. That is, that, is a, that is a bold statement. And I'm finding that a lot of nutritionists who do not make it right out of the gate yeah. kind of flounder and put it on the back burner yeah. and then get a job somewhere else, maybe maybe close proximity, but they're not trying to make it work. Yeah. They're just put up a website, um, good, bad, I mean, it doesn't matter. They put, put something up and then hope that people will come. Yeah. It's funny you mention that because the um, when I was a real estate agent, I took that course with the guy who is all based on NLP. But his uh, one of his statements was to position yourself as I want to be your real estate agent or real estate consultant for life. Like that's those are the relationships he want. He's like that's what he was coaching you to build with people that you know I'm going to help you buy and sell your home now, but I want to be your real estate consultant for life. Mm -hmm. And back then I was like, fuck, I don't want to do this for my whole life. <laughs> yeah. So like, I, like I, I, I was setting myself up for failure because I was never truly in. What's that? 10 people that I wanted to get out of this course. I had two sticky notes on both of my screens. Okay. Just... Uh... But yeah, so. Um, but yeah, like like in mentally, if you're not coming to, to it from that place of this is it, this is what I'm doing. Yeah. You're like there's an NLP. Um, I don't know what what do you call it a saying that uh, the prover proves what the thinker thinks. So you've got, you know, different aspects of your, of your consciousness or whatever, but whatever your thinker thinks is what your prover proves. So if you mm -hmm. think you can't do something, you, then you're not going to be able to do it. Yeah. That's why there's a, tr you know, there's a, you know, part of the language is like, if you can't, if you don't know the answer to something or you don't know where your keys are, you lose your keys. It's like, you know, well, what if you did know where they were? And it's like putting yourself in the frame of mind, like, oh yeah, I, I know where, like, I know that somewhere in my brain knows where my keys are. Yeah. That no, that's that's true. And then and then we get uh, and then we get to the question of whether or not you want to fight the good fight and have people uh, essentially. Do you uh, back to the question? Yeah. Do you want to change people's perspective, which is a different business? Yeah. Or do you just uh, either? Mold yourself, mold your offering to uh, what people will be responsive to. Yeah, you just move on. Yeah, what's well, I say? Like I, I think of like Amy Porterfield and all these course creator people. Like they're signing up hundreds and hundreds of people. Yeah. Again, like I mean, all these statistics are statistics for a reason. Like you know, ninety eight percent of these people that sign up for those courses probably never do anything. Like th they might create a course and they put it up and. It doesn't go anywhere. Yeah. Um, but there's it, it doesn't mean you can't sell to them and still try to help them out. I, I guess is what I'm saying. 
don't know. I mean, it's, uh, you know, the value of what you've done isn't diminished by the fact that nobody bought it. Like you've. Uh, oh, no, I'm not. Uh, yeah. You know what? I'm not thinking it. Uh, I'm not thinking about it in those terms. So I'm not yeah. uh, beating myself up. Uh, about what happened, what didn't happen. It's um, what's, what I would like to know. <laughs> My signature program needs to be, um, if, if I don't have anyone buying into my signature program, yeah. should I be developing it? Well, yeah. The answer is no. You're just, you're just doing something that is interesting to you, but nobody wants to buy it. Yeah. Um, but then I'm thinking, if I do this little program and package this up into something that's sellable, what's the carrot at the end? Yeah. And it might just as well be that I create a membership at the end. And I don't need to sell people into a $2,500 or a $1,000 program. I yeah. sell them into a $37 a month membership. Yeah. And that becomes the bump at the end. Or even the bump in the beginning. Yeah. So yeah. So that's um, so that's 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 the plan for today. Yeah. So I'm unpacking the launch today. I'm um, I'm I'm doing the sales page for this course, and we'll see how that goes. I've reached out. Oh shit! I need to respond. Hold on. Let me just make a note because I'm quite forgetful lately. Yeah. Uh, through my course, I was introduced to a lady who does Facebook ads for a living. Yeah, And I want to reach out to her and find out if there's anything that she can help me with specifically on my ads. Um, teach me most of all, because I, I mean, I will lose access to Jenna's course at one point in time, although she did point out that uh, although my contract says 90 days, yeah. says, we're going to coach you until you make your money back. Yeah. So it's, 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 um, uh, it's a very generous offer which I'm going to take her up on. Uh, that's interesting because I know, like, I think, I think in my course, I think I have lifetime access. Yeah. I think this is, I think this is more, more or less, uh, more or less the same uh, in terms of almost lifetime access. There's no reason why they would take away. It's just, uh, would you be able to have access to the coaches? Yeah. And you need to put something in the contract. Yeah. Because it's when you put time in the contract, it makes people do shit. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Yeah. Well, it's the same with making people pay money, right? Because if, mm -hmm. if, if you don't pay, then uh, there's no there's no motivation. I think I was telling you the story of it when I, when I took that self-hypnosis course. The guy was talking about helping people quit smoking. And he said, if, if people don't actually quit, it means you didn't charge them enough. Mm -hmm. yeah that's true i uh, remember yesterday i was talking about moving my site content from one site to another yeah and then i listened to i think i was listening to your cheese thing or something something kind of tripped uh, a wire in my head yeah and the logic was why would you why would i do that like what what's the impetus for doing that technical stuff yeah. what's hurting me I mean, if I'm doing the baby test, I am actually, it's irrelevant for me on which platform I do the beta test. Yeah. Because I can uh, lead people to a particular course in my uh, environment. Whatever courses are out there beyond that course is really, is really irrelevant. Yeah. Because they're getting a beta test, they're getting, so in, in other words, what, what I came to realize is I, some, I sometimes create, um, obstacles for myself as to why I can't do things. And yeah. you talked about that and yeah. they don't really exist. So yeah. the fact that I said, oh, I needed to port one WordPress instance into it and a, a different one, clean everything up in order to be able to run. No, yeah. some people have no website whatsoever and you still can do the beta test because you're doing it mostly in the Facebook group and over Zoom. Yeah. It's just that that realization made me kind of go like, Wow, our mind works in very peculiar ways. Yeah. My ads are finally running. I've, yeah, so I've seen a few different, at least two different versions of it on Instagram. You have? Oh, yeah. 
Oh, did you see my video last night? Yeah, yeah. Mm. So you were the one who liked it. Yes, I did like it. Merci buckets. It was good. I was even uh, forced my wife to watch a few seconds of it. Because <laughs> I was trying to explain to her, although she didn't know what Linktree was, so it wasn't, uh, mm. wasn't much use. But I was just, I was showing her like, you know, this is, we were talking about this like two or three days ago. And then uh, boom, you've created it. And now you've done a video on it. Like it's, it's great. The amazing thing is Greg, it really doesn't take any effort to create. Yeah. No, I know. It's just a series of call to action buttons with URL links to them. Yeah. And, and no, because because there's no virtually no styling involved, you just add the buttons and that's it. As long as your site is, as long as your page is responsive, in other words, it doesn't mess everything up when it goes to a mobile version. Yeah. Good. Yeah. I actually need to upload my video to Instagram because one of the things is Instagram is a good platform uh, for this. My uh, my Facebook boost got approved. So yes. this is running. Yes, yes. I think last night I spent two dollars and sixty five cents or something and had ninety seven impressions. I don't know. But uh, so then mm. I decided I had another post with my sell your home. It was stress free home selling. Mm -hmm. so I thought, oh, maybe I'll boost this one too, and I did, and then it got rejected. <laughs> so yeah, I, real real estate real estate is tricky. Um, and well, I think that what, because it's it says free or something, maybe that like yeah. it's stress free, like it's not like I'm not mm. giving away something free. You shouldn't say free, and especially in all caps. Yeah, it's not okay. Anyway, I I, I, I got to submit that. I got to look at their policy, and then I'll, I might submit that one for review as well. I mean, I really didn't intend to do any work. I just thought, well, I can just click a button here and see what happens. But yeah. Anyway, we'll see. Because I, 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 I think I just like I've got good products. I just need to figure out the right cheese to get people to them. Well, okay. In the spirit of coaching, uh, and this is less coaching. This is more critiquing because I, I don't, I haven't mastered coaching yet. So let me ask you this question. Do people want, uh, do people know that they have to stage their homes or improve their homes before they sell them? Like, is, um, this, the, is this the natural inclination? Have they been hearing that from anywhere beyond you? Yes, I would say so. And, and you know that happens. Well, A, I'm an avid HGTV watcher. So, you know, in the last 10 or 15 years, there's all kinds of shows about this um, okay b from when i was in real estate in 2007 to now from just looking at at things online it's way more prevalent now than it used to be um so awareness is there let's let's give it a check mark yeah is there is there a desire to do anything about that um in other words, in, in people's lives, in, especially because you're in Toronto and most of the, I know your ads are seen across the world, but let's, yeah. let's, just, let's just stick to Canada, not even Toronto. Yeah. In, the, in the environment when people are being bombarded with messages that all you have to do is put your property up for sale and it's going to fly off the shelf at the highest price. Yeah. Do you think there's an inclination that people would buy this? Yeah. Or is it a detractor in this marketplace? And if it is a detractor, then what would you change in your positioning to make it an absolute must? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, I got to think all that through. I mean, yeah. I know, A, I know it works. B, I know even for people like the, the, the experience I have with my sister-in-law, when I was starting my business before, I followed them up and said, "You know, I'd, you know, you know, I'm doing this business, and you're on, you're putting your house on the market. I'd love to come do what I do." 
and they're like, well, we already did, we already fixed the house up. We, we think it's, you know, and the agent came by, I said it looked great and stuff. And then I went over with my process and things and I still came up with, you know, two or three days worth of work. Yeah, because the agent would say that. That's and, and implemented it and they saw firsthand what it what a difference it made. So um yeah, I mean it's there's there is an uphill battle in terms of you're kind of going against the realtor a little bit, which is part of my my whole story about how yep. you know, every ten thousand dollars in price difference means two hundred and fifty dollars to your realtor, but it means nine thousand five hundred dollars to you. Um, so who, who's supposed to be more motivated uh, to do it? So you're right. Like there, there are obstacles and things that I got to narrow down and find the right audience. There's also a certain level of, of uh, like a tier of houses. Like this isn't for, you know, millionaires who are selling multi-million dollar homes because mm -hmm. they're not going to get their hands dirty with this kind of stuff. It, it's more for middle class. Yes. So then in terms of in terms of that, what would your ad say? What what's the what's the transformation at the end uh, that the people will get and park the money side? Yeah. Got it. Like I mean that's 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 the stone cold, but what's what's the uh, what's the feeling? Like why would they why would they so what in, in other words I'm trying to say what problem are you solving? Let's go back to the basics. Let's go back to, so I have Talia's questions uh, in yeah. my notebook. Let's see. Yeah. So that was the, the latest video I did was stress-free home selling. Was it, So was what pain does the customer feel before finding a solution? Yeah, they're stressed out. They're worried their house isn't going to sell. They're going to be stuck with two mortgages. Um, they're not going to get true? Is that true? Yeah. yeah. Well, that, that's, well, it, there's, there's two scenarios that happen. One is people buy their new house before they sell their old house. Yep. And then they're stressed that they're not going to sell. Okay. Um, and be stuck with two homes. Or they sell their house first and they have to buy a house. Then they're, they're stressed out that they, they're going to have nowhere to live. Um, and the, the whole, you know, I, I, I don't know what... Uh, where it ranks or whatever, but it's kind of like, uh, you know, losing a loved one, losing your job and selling your home. Those are like the three top stressors in somebody's life. So like the latest thing I was trying to get at with this was how do you take the stress out of the whole situation? It, it, it is, if you know that you've done everything that you could do that was in your control yep. and you, you don't have to stress out, you, you know, the chips will fall where they may, you'll get what you get, but you know, that you did everything you could. That's stress. That's how you make it stress free, knowing you did everything that you that was within your power. Okay. That was that was the angle I was going with the the most recent iteration, which is based on this the notion of um, what is the problem that you're trying to solve for people, and then the and then the other problem is you know there's an angle of like you know you you don't know where to start. You don't know how to organize yourself or prioritize like all the things that my process take takes care of for you. Mm -hmm. It walks you through step by step. So I was actually you, I, I was actually thinking yeah. recently to do based on what you've been doing is to do a beta test and run an ad and solicit. You know, are you thinking of selling your house or are you selling your house to do a beta test of the whole course? Not with the intention at the end of selling them the course because once they've done it it's gone, but just to get the testimonials and get the proof points and do the research. Like I, you know, I haven't done the research. So as, answer everything that, that we just talked about mm -hmm. is all, and I won't say it's entirely out of my head because I've, I've done, I've had experience in the industry and in implementing my process with a handful of people. So I know, um, like I, I, it's, it's you know, I have real life experience, so it's kind of it's the same as doing. Research. No, I know it's. I know it's not based on, and I, it, no one can argue that this is based on pure fiction because yeah. you just came up with this. No, it's yeah. obviously it's not. The uh, the one thing though is, so every beta test starts. Remember, I did those interviews where I gave away five dollar Amazon cards. Yeah. 
Yeah. But that's a that's an essential step before you jump into the ads. Yeah. And this is what makes me comfortable knowing that what my solution was is something that people need. It's just for whatever reason, it's not. Um, it hasn't transpired. So, I, like, there's a there's a there's a challenge. Um, yeah. You, well, you you know what I'm trying to say. Yeah, yeah. There, there's a different challenge that I'm facing. Yeah. So I'm go I'm going to get to all this probably the week after next, or mm -hmm. or depending on how next week goes, maybe later if it if it, it might become deprioritized. Because like my guy texted me this morning, just confirming what time zone my time zone I'm in. So we can set up the meeting for next week to talk about the app. So like every, everything to do with my course is made and put on the back burner, depending. Yeah, it's just, just like everything goes flush. Depending how that uh, that conversation goes. Well, that's, you know what, if that goes well, really, <laughs> that's fantastic. That's going to be amazing. Yeah. So we'll see. I mean, there's, I'm putting, I'm working today on the proposal. Mm -hmm. So there's a bunch of different options that I've come up with. Are you going to walk them through a deck or something or just talk to it? Um, yeah, that's a, uh, I had preparing a deck, but the, for the most part, the deck is going to be mostly for my own reference. Mm -hmm. um, it's funny because in yesterday's coaching call, it was a great call because was I telling you this last night when I talked to you? I can't remember. Um, yesterday afternoon. Anyway, the, the one guy who he has two clients that he's met with and done the enrollment conversations with, and now he has to send them a proposal. So he was getting coached yesterday on how to put the, together a proposal. And that's where the guy went through his five questions about the Goldilocks price and all this stuff. But um, he also got to the point of like, how do you do, how do you present your proposal to the person? Yep. He suggested, he goes, you can do slides. He goes, you know, I generally try to stay away from sh sharing my screen with the slides because he goes, I want to be um, in connection with the other person. Yep. And it's hard to connect with the other person if they're looking, not looking at you, but looking at a slide. Now he said, uh, he goes, I say Spoken that. Like a true pro, like a, I yeah. respect that. But he goes, I, he goes, I say that like it's a rule, but it's not a rule because he goes, who knows, I could be on a call with somebody tomorrow and put up a slide. So you just, you kind of, you know, because there are some things that you can't just, it's easier to explain with the visual. Um, anyway, so for the most part, and, and, and I, what I'm trying to do too, is I'm trying to incorporate everything that he's been teaching us into the way I approach trying to sell to him. And to, sure. In, in other words, like, you, you know, use his own methods Against him? Against him, or yeah. Um, so, like, that's why I'm, I'm I'm trying to tie it back to, like, why would he? Why should he be interested in this, right? So I, I'm tying it back to his mission and his oh, vision. Shit! Hold it. Camera shut off. Yeah. What? Uh, um. And you know what? What is his? She's like, what's the incentive for him to do this? Now, I, I suspect, like, in the proposal. I'm proposing that it, it becomes some kind of a monthly charge for him, for his community, that you would sell it to the end user on a monthly basis. He may, he may want to incorporate it as just part of his overall program that when you sign up for his 11,000 pound program, mm -hmm. which I would totally understand because I know like uh, the, the story or the, the analogy I have is my wife and I went on the Disney cruise for our honeymoon and we, we did like three days or four days at the parks and then three days or four days on the cruise. I can't remember which it was like the week was split up, but when you get to the cruise ship, they're like, Oh, you can have this bottomless cup for, for your uh, soda for $15. And it's like, I paid five grand for this cruise. And now you're going to ding me for another 15 bucks. Like why didn't you just charge me 5,015 up front? And when I walk on the cruise, you go, here's your free drinks. I always wondered that. I I always wondered what are they thinking and like in this one, I've been married 20 years and that still pisses me off that I had to shell out an extra well 15 bucks each so 30 bucks for for a cup anyway so so he may decide he just wants to 
incorporate it into his thing, in which case the fee, he would be paying me a fee. What's your fee? Based on the usage. Well, the, 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 I got to figure out the math, but my, my thinking going in was the bait, the core app was, would be $5 a month per user. And then there's a, I think it's for, um, it's either $1.50 or $2 that I have to pay to glide per user. So then say it's $2. So we would each split the $3, a buck 50 each. Why? Well, from like, I, I'm, I'm challenging you because I'm, I'm going to say like, why would you get 50% if you're using, if you're just basically repackaging my knowledge? Um, oh, as opposed to getting more? <laughs> it's a good rebuttal, but that's one of the things that gets you shut down. But sure, you can be a wise ass about it. <laughs> well, because I view it as a partnership that, you know, yeah, you have the content, but but you don't have the platform. I have the platform. Um, you just told him what the platform was for him and say, no, I'm going to go on Fiverr, get somebody to get, do it on Glide. Maybe. No, the, the thing is, I, I'm asking sincerely. Yeah. It's not It's not supposed to put you off. It's just like, what is it? What is it that 50% uh, gets him? And I know that $1.50 is nothing, but he has a massive audience. Yeah. But I mean, if, if, if somebody asked me, one of the responses was, is that like, like any tech, the biggest, the, the biggest problem becomes is when it stops working. So I am the, the money that's going in my pocket is really to make sure that your, all of your clients have an awesome experience. I would also give them the option of bringing it in house and buying you out, but yeah. it's not like part of the first conversation because really, what's your moat? Remember the concept of a moat? Yeah. Like what's 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 stopping anyone from doing the same thing themselves? Yeah. Nothing really. I mean. No, no, absolutely nothing. But the thing is, is. Look, it's not, it's not you trying to make money off his back. You're just trying to create an experience that enhances all of the, the empire that he's built. Yeah. And you're taking it onto yourself to maintain it. The one thing is, if you do use that argument, then it may backfire. Because it may backfire because he's going to say, um, Greg, that's, that's fantastic. I, I, I like hearing that, that I don't have to, like my team doesn't have to get involved. Perfect. And how many years of tech experience do you have? Yeah. Like, mm, I have 20, 20 years of experience building. 20 years of bullshitting people. <laughs> well, I, so here, here's a takeaway I took from, uh, I was thinking about this this morning. So when yep. I watched Miguel's interview with the CEO of uh, Glide. Yep. So Glide's goal is to create 1 billion software developers. Um, yeah. Right. So I was in the context of what he's talking about, I've actually been a software developer since 1995. I've created so many apps on Excel, Microsoft Access, now, I didn't use coding to do them mm. per se. I mean, some some level of coding with the with Excel macros and things, but for the most yeah. part, using no code interfaces. Like everything I created, I created a a category management tool, an ad planning tool, a store development tool. Um, even at Presum, I created a a, a support tool. Um, to uh emotional support tool no was, to, was that was that the time to, when you were beating me at t table tennis yeah for, su for the support so for the support team, for the support team to manage all the the incoming data questions we were getting yeah no uh, i yeah so so I, actually, I have 25 years i have 25 years of, of legitimate software development um experience what I think, uh, what I think your stronger point might be is uh, you didn't just develop, it's not about even software development. It's look, it's, it's 25 years I have spent uh, focused on what people use, not how it's developed, not the background, but actually what people use yeah, and how I mean, to make their lives much less complicated. 
Yeah. And yeah, are there software developers with great accolades and certifications? Absolutely. The problem is, as we all know, that developing a piece of software that no one uses is just as useless as not developing anything that people want. Yeah. That didn't come out right. Yeah. Well, there, when I worked at Wrangle.io, mm -hmm. they had a, a, a skeleton sitting in an office chair, like a plastic skeleton, and it had a sign around his neck that said, uh, I've created so many things that nobody ever uses. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I think that, you know what? I don't think that this conversation is going to go uh, the way of anyone grilling anyone. Yeah. Uh, if, if he is... No, I don't think so either. I mean, taking his, his own approach, it's like, I have an idea and I'm going to make him an offer. And he's either going to take it or he's not. Absolutely, absolutely. And if he takes the idea and decides to do something on his own, that's fine. I mean, it's the same risk that, you know, any company like press them every time they go and do an RFP or go, go do a demo or whatever. I wouldn't even call it a risk, but it's, yeah, it's, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's like people are could take what you show them and do it themselves. But I don't know. The, the, the reality is most, most people don't have the, like the, the big selling feature for Jamie I think is um, other than like putting it on his program and maybe talking about it a little bit, he doesn't have to do anything. He just keeps doing what he's doing. Yeah. And this tool gets created um, and, and distributed to as many people as possible within his community. And he collects a, a big chunk of money. I think I think that's um, I think you're absolutely right in a sense that we're here sitting. Um, what's it called? Playbooking all of the possible interactions. When in reality, it's way simpler than that. It's just look. Here's here's what I think. Uh, here's what I think is amazing. Yeah. Do you want to do it or not? Yeah. It's uh, it's I think it's it's I think it's that. Yeah. But it's interesting to strategize because um, it's interesting to just. Yeah. Hmm. No, I'm, I'm, I'm curious to see. And the, the more the more I've been using it myself and building it, mm -hmm. the more I'm involved, like even the conversation yesterday, like the more value I can see this being for people in the program mm -hmm. to have at their fingertips kind of a laser focused way to get to specific content of his that, yeah. does, that doesn't exist right now. Hmm. So I'll give you an example. Like, like he just went through yesterday, those five, the, the five question model for how to price your proposal. Yeah. Um, that's going to be on the app, that model. So like that if I'm working on a proposal, instead of trying to figure out, oh shit, when did Jamie talk about that? What video was that on? Where in this hour and a half long video was it? It's like, click, click, here's the 10 minute audio and yeah. the, the visual of that model. And then you're gonna send them the preview ahead of time? Not ahead of time. I'm gonna, I'm gonna while I'm talking to them, I'm gonna say, well, they're, you know, I'm gonna explain the concept of what I'm doing and I'm gonna say the, the best way to do this is, is for you to, actually interact with the app. So here, I'll send him a link or I'll put on the screen actually was what I probably will do is they have a Q, uh, QR code. Mm -hmm. So I could, I probably just put on the screen, the QR code and say, scan this with your phone off the screen, mm -hmm. install the app on your phone. And now you see what you think. Powerful, powerful. It, it actually, it actually engages the user right off the bat. Yeah, well, I mean, that, and that's the one of the advantages of Glide as a platform is that there's um, instant iterations and instant, like, and if he says, well, you know, I, well, I don't really like this color. Okay, what color do you want? And I could change the color and it would change on his phone instantly. Yeah, that's true. Anyway. No, this is going to be, uh, I think this is really going to be awesome. This is going to be 
quite amazing. And one, if if nothing, it elevates your experience to with him to a completely different level than just a course taker. Yeah. Yeah. This this can go this can go so many different other ways. And I mean, I'm I'm not trying to leverage the fact that I've just shelled out ten thousand dollars to him. As a, but I mean, it's it's a good well, reason to meet with me and to to give this a chance. So there's nothing wrong with that. If you pay if you, if you pay that much money for this kind of meeting, yeah, and it works out. Yeah, here's the here's a, and I don't know how I'm gonna. I, I thought of this story, so I don't know if you uh, in the grocery stores if you've ever seen. Uh, in the bakery they had a machine they called it poppers for a while and they changed the name to brogies but it was basically a machine that was i don't know maybe this big and it basically took like a little spoonful of uh wheat i think it was wheat based and then it it, it puts it under pressure and it spits out a disc that's about i don't know five inch no, diameter and it's like a low fat it's like almost like a rice cake but it's not made of rice it's made of wheat and then they had a corn version as well. But when I was at Sobeys, we launched this program. So the, these guys came in to show us this program. And my, I didn't even want to take a meeting with them. And my boss knew them or something. So he's like, yeah, I'll just meet with these guys. Anyway, and I thought, this is like, what the hell is this? This isn't a bakery item. Like, you're not. Anyway, it ended up being the number one item in the bakery. What? Yeah. It was the number one selling item in the bake in the entire bakery it was a million i don't know whatever uh forget the numbers it was, it was millions of dollars of sales a year that's incredible yeah yes, and I you, 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 essentially your point is you never actually know yeah it's like what do you have to lose like this this, it, this is this the what do you have to lose story like let's do the beta test with 20 users get their feedback see what they say see what they what features they like, what features they would want, um, and how much they they would uh, be willing to pay for it. It's true. What do you have to lose? Got nothing. There's nothing to lose. There's absolutely nothing to lose. No, that's right. So. No, that's so. Uh, so the, the meeting's not. It's not on the books yet. No, he just texted me this morning asking me what time zone I'm in. So. I'm ex he I know he's on he was on a three day intensive coaching thing with a client this week because he did our laser coaching session from there yesterday and today is the last day of that um, that meeting for him. No, that's and there may be a number too. Like I, I, I personally like I've I've for years I've had this vision of creating something that has a perpetual income stream yeah right he might say oh this is great how much to just buy it so then i, I got to come up with a number how many people does he have in his course i don't know there's like on his there's a facebook group for clarity life that says uh five point seven thousand people in that group mm -hmm. Um, but I know like he's talked in the past about like, he's had, he, he does things and it goes out to, I think, I remember him saying 80,000 people are reading his articles. So, so imagine, I mean, imagine that his uh, audience is uh, 80,000 people and growing at, let's say 2% a year, 5% yeah. a year, yeah. or maybe even 10% a year. So if, um, if the adoption rate of an app is going to be somewhere in a ballpark of 50%, because why wouldn't you? Yeah. 50% is just went through the course they, 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 they've already forgotten about. Yeah. They're not as, it, it didn't touch them as, as much as it touched, for example, you. Yeah. So let's say it's 100K, just, just for ease of calculation. 50,000 people download it. Yeah. 50,000 people pay a recurring, what, five bucks a month? Um, and um, the cost of the user, so it's you're really splitting with three dollars, yeah. So, okay, so let's see 50,000 people paying you a buck 50 multiplied by 12, 
that's nine hundred thousand yeah. dollars. One million dollars. Million dollars. A uh, million is not that much. Oh, one billion dollars. Yeah. Um, reasonable? Unreasonable? Yeah. Well, I, I'm not going in that high. Like, I the only number I know is a real number. Yeah. Is what I see on the Facebook group, which is five point seven thousand people. Okay. So I mean, I'm I'm going in more of thinking like, if you got a thousand people to start with. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. There's um there's something to be. So you said a user on the light is two dollars. Yeah. Does it go up or down with uh, scale? No. You can. I I need to talk to them. Like the on online, it's. Uh, it's two fifty two dollars or one fifty a user. I can't remember what the yeah. the different plan was, but like I think you could you could probably talk to them and get it down to like a dollar a user, maybe. Maybe. Um, Either way, then, like I mean, then, they you know they, they deserve the they, they're they're the platform. They deserve their chunk of the money too. So. Oh no doubt, no doubt. The question, the question, the question that I have um, is again back to that fifteen dollar cup, endless cup. Yeah. yeah. Five dollars a month. Why would you change that? Why would you charge that? Like, why would why would anyone like? Would you pay for a five dollar app if you're on with Jamie uh, like for uh, what three thousand pounds? Yeah. Would you? This would be just a bonus, right? Possibly. I don't know. I think people. Th this is what you got to test because I think. It's an added value. I mean, he could you can position it as, hey, this is a new thing, and you know, people would understand that there's a, a cost to having new technology, whatever. It, it's it's a service that is is people are accustomed to paying a monthly cost for. Um, so I don't know. I don't know where his head's going to be at. Like to me, even if he's incorporated it as a bonus into his program. I would say he he would want it, it, it adds value to his program. He and I don't know what his his year over year price increase is, mm -hmm. but like he's gonna he's gonna take the price. Like I would I wouldn't just add it on as incur a cost of this new thing without recapturing that money somewhere. Now the the other the other thing I and, and the, these are all ideas that him and I will have to to vet. But like you know when you sign up for his course, you get the app for free for the the twelve weeks you're on the course, mm -hmm. and then the fee comes after the like once the course is done, then you pay the monthly fee. Well, what if, or you get well, it free for a year? Or I don't know, three months or six months or there's all kinds of ways you can slice and dice it. Yeah, what would it cost to have the app for life? You know how they do it. Like you can pay. Twenty nine ninety nine for one, uh, like uh, sorry, nineteen ninety nine a month, or you can pay two ninety nine and have it for life. Yeah, would there be an offer like that? Uh, not, not that we have to solve it. Like really, we, yeah. There's it's this is not what what's on the table right now. And the table right now is just have a conversation yeah. that can or that can lead to something or may not lead to anything. Yeah, yeah. So I yeah, mean, the, I, the way I look at it is that. Again, I, I keep coming back to, I mean, and, and somewhat selfishly, generating a perpetual income stream. Yeah. And even for him, like he, he he has these expensive courses, but once people go through the course and they're done, then in order for him to, to get more money from those people, they have to sign up for another course. Like this is this is a way to extend the income stream from each person that takes his courses into perpetuity. True. True. No, absolutely no doubt. And it, and it's it's I don't know. It's such a low amount. I mean the, the other option so there's the there's the $5 and I got to think about this too in terms of um pounds. Um so I got to do a little bit of research on conversions and look at different things like the how much is a Netflix subscription and things in pounds versus dollars. Right. Right. Just right. to get my head around it. Cause I say $5 because that's a, a familiar unit to me. And, but and you're, you're also saying probably Canadian dollars. Which... Yeah. He's, he's in the UK. So like maybe at five, maybe it's five pounds, which is more like $8. <laughs> 
Yeah. Um, or maybe it's two pounds. I don't know. Uh, I got to figure that out. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I feel like, you know, there's a... I think, I think, you know what, I just, it's just a realization is coming in to me that we're, we went down the rabbit hole. We are already splitting money yeah. that doesn't, doesn't exist. exist yet. Yeah. And I think if, 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 if the question comes up on a call as to, well, uh, what if you sell it to me right now? It's like, Jamie, first of all, that is a fabulous offer, which I didn't even think we would get to this point. Yeah. I would be happy to consider it and come back to you with a number, or you can tell me what, what feels right for you. Yeah. But I would take a pause right now because the first thing I wanted to do is gauge your interest in this. Yeah. Now, salesperson might say, whoa, that's a bad answer because you didn't seal the deal. Yeah. But short of you having an answer, but yeah. I think plopping a number like well, a million, million, hundred thousand bucks yeah. on the table is. Yeah. To me, the deal, the deal I'm looking to seal is is less about a sale and more about the beta test can we get 20 people to test this out yep yeah and that this you know this is literally I think that's the i think that's the right strategy greg i think that's the right strategy to go with yeah and even talking about money and splits and whatever is all around until we do the research and do the beta test. We don't know. Like we might do it and people go, yeah, fuck, I'd pay $20 a month for this. Or That's they might crazy. say, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I don't like it. I wouldn't use it. Okay. What would you use? <laughs> yeah, relentless sales, relentless sales. So anyway, I, I know there's something there. I know it's, it, there's people will like it. It's going to have value. I think it, it furthers his vision and mission of, of engaging and helping more people. Yep. The other version of it was a, there's a $20 version I had in mind, which is the, uh, the PLR version, which, so there's the app plus a supporting PLR site where people can, you can basically get access to all the content and transcripts and things, and then use that on your site for, or on your own app because that's a that's the third component of this is then do people want to build a custom app for their own coaching practice for their own clients to use that's a that's a fabulous angle that is a fabulous angle too so because like i can see like when you're coaching right and you go you're talking to somebody and somebody goes well, i don't really get what you're saying well hang on like you know Let's just use the cheese audio as an example. You know, oh, you're trying to market something. Well, here, listen to let's listen to this and, and we can talk about this. And you listen to it for five minutes and then you talk about it. Or, you know, I don't really understand the three three principles. What is this whole, you know, uh, how our experience is created kind of nonsense? Oh, okay. Well, here, let's let's listen to it articulated by the master. <laughs> and then we can talk about it. Anyway, so it's a tool for the coach and then the, and then the app that they would give to their clients is more of an affirmation, reconfirmation, motivational tool for them. So it's the same thing. Like how do you, how do your, how does your coaching live beyond just the 60 minutes you spend with a person once every two weeks or once a month? If you're, if you're on an app in their pocket and they can listen to you, um, in some way, shape, or form. Anyway, we're almost at an hour, so we should. Uh... It's it's going to be. I, I can't wait to uh, hear the recap of how it goes down, because all of these uh, all of these assumptions is again we're playing you're, we're playing with our heads. We don't actually you haven't actually spoken to the person. No, exactly. Okay, an hour it is. Let's pack this in. Uh, so next, hopefully, it happens next week because this is going to be tremendous. Yeah, I hope so. And um, I'm going to be, uh, I'm, I'm willing to tag along because you're going to have so much sales that uh, junior developer. That's right. The only, the only thing that runs on Google. What's that? Oh, runs on Google. Yeah. It, well, they're, they're actually building their own native uh, tables now. So it's, uh, 
It's good. All right. We'll see you uh, tomorrow. See you tomorrow, man. Bye.